Well, tonight I am cooking up a treat because it's one of my favorite foods. It's a Mexican dish, shrimpy enchiladas. And these enchiladas have a green sauce on them. I'm not really a huge fan of red sauce, so I'm going with the green sauce and these are gonna be delicious. Pretty simple to make. Um, but before we get into the recipe, I just wanna say, don't forget all my recipes, including this one, you'll be able to find on my website. All you have to do is go to cookitfor2.com. That's cookitfortwo.com. You can go there, you can find my blog, my uh, recipes, my cookbook is over there. So make sure you go over there, check it out. While you're at it, go to YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell so that you'll get notified every time a new video comes out. And you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. I think I've covered it all. So now that we've got all that out of the way, I would really appreciate any kind of comment, sharing, anything like that you can do because all of that helps my business. So thanks again. Um, now, what we're going to do is I have some oil heating in a skillet because the first thing that we're going to do is we're using corn tortillas for this. Enchiladas, um, sometimes they're made with flour tortillas too, but we're using corn. And we want to, you can kind of see how these kind of feel rubbery. Well, what we want to do is we're going to soften them up, make them real pliable by putting them in this hot oil just for a little bit, about 10 seconds per side. And then we're going to put them on a paper towel just to let that oil drain off off and we'll put wrap them in foil to keep them warm while we're getting some other stuff ready so here we go The tortillas are all cooked. They're in the on the plate underneath the foil, keeping warm. They're gonna just sit there and hang out for a little bit until I'm ready for them. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some onion cut up. Um, so let's go to get to chopping this. Now, this is personal preference. You can uh, you know do a really fine chop, you can you know do a medium chop, it's just or dice, it's just up to you um, how you want to do yours. I'm just going to kind of do a medium. Not a big deal here. I will say though, I would love to point out, I don't know about any of you, but you know, having a, a good knife is so important in the kitchen. This knife right here is awesome. This is a princess house knife. It's the Sanat Sanatuco, I think is how you pronounce it. But um, as you can see, Oh my gosh, it's stainless. Um, and what I love about it is it's so, it feels so good in your hand. Like it's has a good weight, but yet it's light. So I just wanted to point that out. This is an awesome little knife. It's very easy to sharpen. You know, you can keep it good and sharp. So um, that's very important. They say a lot of times that people get injured more in the kitchen with dull knives than they do with sharp ones. Hey, this was a really big onion, so I am gonna stop right there. We love onion, but I think this is gonna be plenty for what we're gonna need it for tonight. So we're not gonna use this one. Let's just sit this over here. I have coconut oil heating up in my skillet. You want a skillet large enough that you can, you know, put in. We're going to add several different things in here. What we're going to do first is our onions that we've been chopping up. We're going to put those in there. And, and this is one of those times when I really wish there was smell-o-vision. <laughs> so you could smell because we're going to do onions and garlic and coriander and cumin. Oh my goodness, it is gonna smell so good in here. 
have them, uh oh, got a little piece in there. Okay, I have my onion in there. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle about a half of a teaspoon of cumin and a half of a teaspoon of coriander. We wanna season it up really well. Okay, and you know, you could even add a little chili powder. Actually, I think I might do that. This is some garlic powder. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw in a little bit of chili powder, cause you know, we like it spicy. So let's put in some chili powder. Isn't that fun? I just love it, man. You're cooking, you can do what you want, add what you want, get it to taste the way you want it to. Okay, I'm gonna get out my most used tool in my kitchen, at just about my um, garlic press. And I'm gonna press this garlic in here so we can get this to cooking. I'm using about four to five cloves. I've got five or six in mine actually just because they're pretty small. If you have a good size clove, probably about four cloves and you're good. And to let you know, yes, um, I'm cooking for two, but this I'm actually making, I could have halved this recipe very easily, but I'm gonna make a full recipe because I have two separate dishes. I'm gonna make one for tonight and then I'm gonna have one for us to eat Sunday. So I won't have to cook Sunday. But you could half this very easily and just do for two. Let's give this a stir. Remember anytime you're cooking with garlic, you never wanna just leave it sitting there for long. You wanna get it stirring around because it will burn. And when your garlic burns, your dish is ruined. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt in there, and I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. Make sure we flavor or season every layer. I'm gonna let this cook for a little bit, and then I am gonna turn my heat off just for a minute because I'm gonna, I'm gonna dice up my shrimp just a little bit. Remember at the beginning, I said this was shrimpy enchiladas. We're not doing chicken, we're doing shrimp. And I wanna chop mine up just a little bit before I cook it. And I don't want my onions and garlic to cook too long. So what I'm gonna do is, I have a gas stove, so it's pretty easy to do this. I'm just gonna turn that off, let that sit a minute, and then I'm gonna grab another board because I'm gonna be chopping up shrimp. Okay, here's my shrimp. This is medium shrimp that has been peeled and deveined without the tails. It's thawed and it's been rinsed and drained. So now you'll see I've got a, a chopping board on top of my other one just because we're doing shrimp and I don't want this to be on my cutting board. And I'm just gonna give these a rough chop. By the way, I'm just gonna point out this is a new cutting board to me. I absolutely love it. You'll see it's bamboo, which is wonderful. It will not hold in order, odors. It doesn't hold in uh, bacteria. And the cool thing is these little blue, pretty blue silicone strips, they're beautiful, but they have a purpose. When it's not on a board like this one, or even on this one, um, it will hold your cutting board in place. Um, that's what those little silicone strips are for. So this item right here, it's from Princess House also, but I just had to share it with you. You know, anytime you find something that you love in the kitchen, it's always good to share it. So this is the cutting board, bamboo. And you know what, if you um, love it or you would like to try one, maybe you're in need of a new cutting board or a new knife, there will be a link in the description below and you can just go and check that out at your convenience. We, it will not take long at all to cook this shrimp. You know, as soon as it starts to get pink and it's not opaque anymore, that means it's done. And we can take it out and we're gonna start stuffing our shells with it. Or tortillas, they're not really shells. 
Here we go. Let's add our shrimp. Boy, it smells good in here. I'm using my other hand, not the hand I touched touch the shrimp with, and I'm putting a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more garlic on there. And then I'm going to start stirring this up good and make sure that shrimp gets down onto the skillet. You can already see some of it is turning pink already. So let's get the shrimp good and cooked. Look how delicious that looks. Just a little reminder, make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video because I have another surprise to share with you that I haven't even told you about yet. You don't want to miss it. Okay, now I have some frozen chopped spinach that I have thawed and squeezed all the liquid out of it. You, that's very, very important. You want to make sure you get all the liquid out of your spinach because it can ruin your dish very, very quickly. Spinach has a ton of moisture in it, the frozen does, and so um, it's a really neat way. You can just stick it in a towel, like a, a kitchen towel, and you just roll it up like a taco, fold the ends, you know, twist your ends kind of like your a piece of candy looks, and just twist it as hard as you can, and you'll see the tighter you get it, that liquid will just start pouring out of your spinach and so you just want to make sure that you get all that liquid out now we're going to let this cook just for a few minutes and then we're going to start filling our taco or our tortilla shells okay we've had our little tortillas sitting over there resting so now what we're going to do is we're going to take about i would say you know, a, a tablespoon, a little bit more than a tablespoon of our filling. We're going to put it on our shell. We're going to take about a tablespoon of, put that there where you can see it. We'll do about a tablespoon or so of cheese. Okay, and we're going to roll this up. And we're going to take the seam side and we want to put it down in our container or in our casserole dish now i have a smaller casserole dish because remember i'm doing two separate ones if you're going to do a whole recipe and you're not splitting it up you would just put it in a 13 by 9 dish and that should that you know that's what you would put it in is a 13 by 9. i'm just going to use my fingers and i'm just going to judge here if I run out of cheese, I'll just have to grate some more up, you know? There's worse things that could happen. All right, so let's put that in there. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we run out of filling. When you put your filling on your tortilla, if you'll kind of put it a little off center, it just kind of helps a little bit as you're rolling it up. Uh, so just remember that, just kind of put your filling a little off center as you roll it up, just kind of gives you a little area there you can grab hold of something, and that makes it a little bit easier. I've got all these rolled up. Now what I'm gonna do is, remember I'm halving this because I'm doing two dishes. If you had one dish, then you would put everything in your one dish. This is our green enchilada sauce. This is just a jar of enchilada sauce. I'm gonna put about half of this into this dish and what you, you just wanna pour this right over your enchiladas. Just make sure you cover them up good. Mm, that smells so good. Let's see, a little bit more. Okay, there now I'm gonna take half of my cheese and I'm gonna sprinkle half of my cheese on this one, and then I'll put the other half on my other one. I have some slices in here because when I went to use my food processor, I had the blade on there 
backwards. And so it was started slicing it instead of shredding it. You know what? I'm probably going to shred some more cheese because we want to make sure we have them good. We do have cheese on the inside, but you know, you can never have too much cheese. So that's how this is going to look. And then we're going to take this in, put this in the oven. The oven's been preheated at 350. So we're going to put this in there and let it cook for about 25, 30 minutes until it's bubbling all around the edges. I told you if you watched to the very end of the video there would be a surprise here's the surprise I don't know if you're familiar with it or not I'm sure a lot of you are but I fixed a Mexican drink to go with our enchiladas and it is horchata and what that is it's a drink made out of rice milk water sugar and vanilla and it is delicious if you've never had it you definitely want to try it this recipe will be on my website this drink just brings back really special memories because when our son was still alive um, we had a big mexican fiesta party and his wife jc made this drink and we all fell in love with it so tonight when we take a sip of this we're going to be thinking of them